soul. Yes. So many workers today go to work like it's a daily prison sentence. Yes. We yes. shouldn't have jobs like that. Woo. 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 It is so great to see that so many of you are outraged. You're out. My job as an educator is to create troublemakers. And I am so happy to see that there are so many young troublemakers coming up today. I've been coming around here off and on for the last week trying to listen in to what people are doing and trying to understand the processes that they're creating to try to take on the one percent and I'm really impressed. This gathering and I invite those of you who are here for the first time to stop by, stop by in the evenings when they're having their assemblies and listen, this is a school for democracy that's going on right here. I can't tell you how many conversations I've heard um, and participated in with people who are trying to figure it out. They're looking for solutions. They're trying to find common ground with one another. It's a process that's really hard, and it's a process that I really have faith is going to bring us forward. I've been waiting for this for a long time. I've I've been teaching for 40 years, and I look at the kids ever since the 1980s when things started to go south, when our standard of living started to go down, when they started privatizing and deregulating and outsourcing our jobs and raising the cost of college education so that students graduate deeply in debt. I didn't have to be in debt when I went to college. Most of the people I know had cheap education. Today, we put this huge burden on our young people, and then we don't even have decent jobs for them when they make their way through and get their degree. Thank you. I've been waiting for young people to get mad, and I think we're finally here. about this setting. This piece of public art is called I-O-U-U-S-A. <laughs> and pick up a pamphlet if there are any left because it's really interesting and I heard that the, the guy who put it together is going to be speaking at uh, 6 o'clock after the march. Yeah. And I want to hear his story. But, I, you know, in a sense, I think it should be renamed We Owe the World. Yeah. Because we do owe the world, not in the way you're thinking about it because of our trade deficits and all, and all of those things. We owe the world for working so cheap that we can be clothed and fed and, and buy all our fancy electronic equipment off of the exploitation of workers all over the world. There is a group of people that 1%, it's actually bigger than that, who have stolen your futures and they've stolen the futures of people all over the world, working people just like you. And I really encourage you to read history, not the history that most of you learned in school, which is the history of rich white guys, <laughs> military leaders, corporate leaders, Read the history of the people. Read the history of the people like Mother Jones, who stood up to John D. Rockefeller Jr. and organized women with brooms and mops to sweep the scabs out of the coal mines that were on strike. Somebody last night mentioned Andrew Jackson as if he was a good guy. I think we should learn the history of another Jackson, let me find his name here, Benny Jackson, who was in the Civil Rights March in Selma, who was marching for his rights and he got shot down by the police. Those are the people we need to learn from. 
We need to learn from their movements because we have to create a movement in order to be able to take on the 1%. American elites don't make concessions to people without a fight. It has to be taken from them through mass movements that build enough power to make life impossible for them as usual. And so I really encourage you to figure out how this can be turned into a movement, a movement in Kansas City as well as a national movement and a worldwide movement. We, I think it's already going. If I have any advice, I always have advice, <laughs> is to take this big school for democracy and to turn it into a real activism. And I know we're all thinking really big. We're thinking about Wall Street. We're thinking about those thieves. But we really have to think local as well because movements get built through local issues. I want to talk about a couple of issues that are on the horizon that I think it might be really good to get involved in. I'm a member of Kansas City Jobs with Justice. Here's my button. We're all about economic justice, and we're a coalition of unions, of faith groups, of community organizations, and of students. And we're going to be taking on an issue that I think affects a lot of you uh, in the next year, and that's to raise the Missouri minimum wage by one dollar and to increase and to increase the percentage that tipped employees get from 50 to 60 percent of the minimum wage. We're going to be circulating petitions. We need volunteers. We need people to help change public opinion. Actually, the public opinion's on our side. What we need to do is oppose those people who are going to lie and say it's bad for the economy. It's great for the economy when people make more money, that working people make more money, because we're the engine of growth. Yeah. Another issue that is going to be on the horizon, there's an organization called CCO, which is a faith organization, and they're sponsoring an initiative to get rid of payday lending. Yeah. Yeah. And to try to get some real credit institutions into our poor communities where people do need credit. Those are two. There's another in Kansas. If you're in Kansas, there's Kansas United, Kansans United, which is just formed, which is trying to take on the whole agenda that is cutting the social safety net for the most vulnerable people, vulnerable people in our society. Those are a few of the things. I really encourage the folks here to investigate things like this, get more involved. We need way more activism and build a movement for justice for everybody, for, for working people in this society. Build that movement. You have the world to win. Thank you.